Okay, so now we've gotten to the hardcore parts of our teardown. Hardcore because up to this point, everything is pretty much straight disassembly and, and easy observation, you know, our broken piston. But at this point, before you pull the crank out of the block, you want to check the way things sit. You want to check the way things lay because this tells you now whether the crank is going to need work, whether the block is going to need work, what you're going to have to replace, what's usable, what's not. But let's go through this from the get-go. So from the top, the first thing I did was the other day I pulled out the camshaft and I gave the cam bearings a look over. And in this case my cam bearings are beautiful. I don't see any scuff marks, any wear marks, anything weird. Now here's the unique thing about cam bearings. They're pressed into the block. Now over the course of a block's life things happen. When it's brand new machine from the factory as a fresh assembly everything is dead nuts perfect but now over 100 200 300 thousand miles thousands of heating and cooling cycles below zero temperatures 110 degree temperatures loads all sorts of things it can tend to move around a little bit and if it tends to move around even just let's say two thousandths of an inch from the front to the back which you think about it, look at the, the real estate that's here, what's two thousandths of an inch? Twist or distortion? Well, it'll show up in the cam bearings. Now, over the course of an engine's life, that shift happens very, very gradually. And what will happen is the cam bearing will kind of wear, slowly wear, to conform to the different configuration of the block. Now, it's not enough, it's not the distortion won't be bad enough that you'll actually have to go and have the block completely remachined. But it's enough that if you put a fresh set of cam bearings in and you've got a tight section, even by a thousandth of an inch, there isn't going to be enough oil clearance between the bearing and the, the cam bearing and the cam journal itself for sufficient oiling and there's a chance that it grabs and turns the bearing. So, what I recommend and what I'm doing with this engine is the cam bearings look good leave them alone. Now there are certain circumstances where you've got to change the cam bearings. If you're going to have the block hot tank, for example, let's say you've got a lot of rust, a lot of gack, and this thing's going to be hot tanked, it destroys the bearings. A new set has to be put in. If you look them over and they're chewed or they're, you know, they don't look good, they don't look smooth, right? Change them. But in our case, they look good and we're going to leave well enough alone. There were no problems in there and we're going to make sure there's going to be no problems in the future choice is yours and it's one of those judgment calls that you have to make. My judgment call on this is we leave the cam bearings. Now the crankshaft, before we unbolt this thing we want to check how it sits on the block. We want to check the thrust bearing. The thrust bearing right here on this engine is number three. It could be anywhere on your engine. Now here's the thing with the thrust bearing. The thrust bearing is what keeps the crank from moving front to back. On a stick shift engine, you'll generally find a good bit of wear in the thrust surface. On an automatic like this one, unless the thing was abused, unless the engine was really abused, you're probably not going to find any, any problems or any issues in the thrust surface, but you got to check it anyway. So what we do is we move the crank, let me put my glasses on. When you're doing this stuff, if, if you need glasses, this is where you want to wear them. You don't want to let anything get past you. So what we're going to do is we're going to pry the crank back and forth with this screwdriver and watch this section right here. And, and I see like next to no wear. There's like no movement. You can get a feeler gauge in there, find out what the spec is for your engine. You see I'm moving it right there. Okay. And that surface looks good. That looks really good. So I know that this is going to be able to go back together again with a stock thrust bearing, a, a standard size thrust bearing. Here's what you got to know about this now. Some engines have select fit thrust bearings so that you can tailor it, let's say there's some wear in the in the crankshaft thrust surfaces. They have select fit thrust bearings so that you can tailor that or make up for any wear in the crankshaft. Some engines don't. 
Now, if you're dealing with an engine that has wear here and doesn't have select fit thrust bearings, this crank is going to be no good. You're going to throw it away because by the time you're done welding up the thrust surfaces and having them remachined and everything, it's just cheaper and easier to go get yourself another crankshaft. But this is definitely something you want to check. These engines, I do not believe, have select fit thrust bearings, but we'll find out when we go to put it back together again. This one here, no problems at all. We know that our thrust bearing is good. We know that our thrust surfaces on the crankshaft are good. There's no play. Looking over the journals, so on our raw journals here, we see absolutely no signs of wear or any type of weirdness right now this crank is obviously hardened from the factory it's a, it's actually a pretty nice crank it's got a rolled fillet here in the corner the journal surfaces are beautiful now if you're dealing with engines from the, let's say the, the, the Malays era, the 70s, the 80s, into the 90s, you're going to find that a lot of these cranks weren't hardened at all. It's just a, the, the soft cast surface, and you'll see lines through them. If you can run your finger across them and feel any of those lines, that journal's got to be cut. In this case here, we have perfect journals front to back. So... I know that there's no wear here, and we'll be able to just throw a fresh set of bearings on there and should be good to go. But again, judgment call, you've got to look over yours carefully. And you can also look for cracks while you're at it. When you see, generally speaking, if, you, if you're looking for cracks in your journal, you want to look along the cheek right here, and you'll see a crack. You'll see cracks that'll emanate from this area and go into the surface, look them over really carefully. If you suspect that the engine was ever abused or hammered or anything like that, generally speaking, on a, on a normal passenger car engine like this, you're not gonna find any cracks like that. These things aren't stressed enough in normal use to cause that kind of crack. But if you're dealing with a higher performance engine, that's definitely something you wanna look at. If in doubt, you can have it magna fluxed. But again, see, generally speaking, you can see when there is a crack, you can see it with your eyes. All right, so we know now that our raw journals are good. We know that our thrust surfaces are good. And now we're going to pop the crankshaft out of the block. So now before, before we undo the main caps, you want to make sure that they're numbered because the cap is machined to the block. You cannot mix these caps up. They have to go exactly back in the position they came from. I cannot think of any engines I've come across off the top of my head that don't have the caps numbered from the factory. And here in this one, you can see right here, this one has got number one, number two, number three, and so on and so forth. So no, no need to, to mark these. If by chance the engine you're working on does not have clearly defined numbers on the caps, that's the time to stamp some numbers in there, or etch them, or do whatever you have to do. All right, so let's pop these caps off. Now I'm listening for the, that good breaking sound. That's telling me that none of these bolts are stretched. And that this section of the block was never severely overheated. I didn't get a snap out of that one. And I didn't get a snap out of that one. I know I'm going to look at these two bolts. And it is possible that this section of the block did get hot enough at some point that this area expanded and stretched the bolt slightly, but we didn't get a snap out of these.
this is an awkward section now where I know I should be talking about something, but I don't know what to say. We'll make the rest of this like an ASMR session. They all unthreaded nice and evenly. So I know we don't have any issues there. I do smell burn though. It's at it's at a it's like a gear loop smell or like a almost like an onion type of smell. So yeah, at some point this thing did get hot. All right, so popping the caps off of here. The caps are fit into a register. There's a little notch down here in the block that the cap is gonna fit into, and it's gonna be stuck in there. You can't just take the cap. Oh, okay, that one you can. All right. Sometimes you gotta take the hammer and give them a tap. Like this one, maybe not. Okay, so let's lay these out and get a look at the bearings. Because this is going to tell you the health of the crankshaft also. There's our thrust bearing. Yeah, and that's beautiful. Like no wear at all on that. So these bearings are absolutely beautiful. And this is, remember, this is the bottom of the engine. So if you had oil starvation problems or anything like that, it would show up here first because the weight of the assembly and the pistons and rods pushing down on it, you would see distinct wear patterns here. Now also by comparing these bearings, let me get a, let me get a thing to wipe this off. By comparing these bearings, you can also tell how straight or how true the crankshaft is. Yeah. These are beautiful. Uh, and you can see right here at the bottom on each of them is a pretty even scuff mark. And all that means is that at some point this thing might have sat for a little bit of time the oil seep out and then on that first start you'll get that little scuff there but that is completely normal and beautiful now if you see one of these bearings so let's say okay so here's the front of the engine here's the back of the engine so let's just say you see a progressive wear pattern where this one is perfect this one is almost perfect this one gets a little a little you know then this one's a little more worn and this one's a little more worn and then less and less. That's telling you that the crankshaft is bent in the center. It's not completely true. Now, the best way to check for your crank, obviously you can, you can rely on that as a visual clue. The best way to check the crankshaft's trueness is with a dial indicator like this. If you don't have a dial indicator, I mean, if you can borrow one, that's great. Now some of the tool stores rent them out or the parts stores rent them out. If you don't have one, don't freak out. Uh -huh. 
oh, I gotta go get one of these. A visual look at the bearings will give you a pretty good idea of what's going on. And also, you can spin the crank. And again, let's look at these journals. Which, the bottom end of this engine is truly pristine. And, and you know, judgment calls, I don't even think I'm going to put new main bearings in it. I believe I'm going to put this thing back together again with the ones that were in there. They're proven and they're not worn. But again, judgment call, you have to look at what you have and make the call based on that. This is just beautiful. I feel that I really lucked out with this engine. Your results may vary though. So, all right, so at this point, this is what I've assessed. We need no work on our crankshaft. It's beautiful. I'm going to look over it a little more carefully for any type of cracks or anything like that. I'm going to check these rod bolts back here. Actually, I mixed them up. I should have put them apart separate. But I'll check these bolts right here for stretch. But I see no evidence on the journal or anywhere that there's an issue. So I'll check these for stretch, these two bolts. But my block, aside from a hone job, is good to go. This isn't going to have to go to a machine shop. The crankshaft is good to go. It's not going to have to go to a machine shop. And we're going to reuse our cam bearings. So, the next step is to order up parts. And I uh, haven't decided exactly how I want to do that yet, but I do want to take you guys along for that specific ride too, because that's a big part of it. You know, where do you get parts from? How do you determine, you know, quality from not quality? Do you go for the bargain basement stuff? Or, you know, because some things you can cheap out on and some things you really got to, you're going to spend the money for. Uh, that's it for now. The next time, We'll order up some parts and we'll haul off what, we, what we're going to have machined to the machine shop and let them get started on it. That could be a very time consuming process. Machine shops, you know, they'll tell you, oh yeah, I have it ready, ready in three days. Three days turns into three weeks, three months. So get moving on that part of it as quickly as you can. All right, I hope you guys got something out of that and uh, I'll see you tomorrow.